Last thing I want to talk about in this section is what they call rational exponents. This isn't the first time we've talked about a rational number. In fact, we did that when we talked about subsets of real numbers, I think maybe in the first section. But a rational number is basically anything that can be written as a fraction. So a rational exponent for us is basically a fractional exponent. And here's an example, so x to the 3 halves power. Anytime you see a fractional exponent, it actually has two parts. The numerator is going to be the exponent, and the denominator is going to be the index. So the way we can express this not as a rational exponent is actually say it's the uh, square root of x cubed, or that's basically we're cubing it first and then taking the square root, or we can say it's the square root of x to the third power. Now one of these, as you can see, there are two different ways to do it. It doesn't really matter which one you do first, um, but I choose to do one more than I do the other. And the reason is, is because uh, I choose this one most often. And the reason I choose that one is because, you know, if you take a number, uh, say like uh, 8, okay, well, well, no, let's do a different one. Um, let's try a number that we can definitely uh, take this squared up, 16. If you take 16, uh, if you plug in 16, well 16 cubed, I have no idea what 16 cubed is. And even if I did, I don't know what the square root of that number would be, because it would be so large. But if you come over here uh, and you plug it in, the square root of 16 of course is 4, and 4 cubed will give us 64. So uh, as you can see, the reason I choose to do this is because we're going to end up with smaller numbers, and smaller numbers are usually easier to work with. So another example uh, is this one down here. We'll look. So it's 27 to the 2 thirds power. So this is really the cube root of 27 squared, or you can write it as the cube root of 27 raised to the second power. Okay, well, again, the one I would choose to use is this one right here because it's easier for me to work with. The cube root of 27 is actually going to be 3, so I will get 3 now to the second power, so that will simplify down to 9. One thing you need to remember is if you ever have a negative uh, exponent with a rational exponent, the negative sign always has to go with the exponent. We know how to deal with a negative exponent, but we do not know how to take a negative root. So if there is a negative sign on your rational exponent, make sure you always put it with your exponent and not the index. We'll look at one more example. Uh, so here's an example of what we're talking about. So what we do is this would actually be the square root of 4 raised to the negative 1 power. So the negative in this rational exponent always has to go with the exponent. Uh, the index always has to be positive. So this will give us 2 to the negative 1 power. And of course, we would move that down to the denominator, and we'll change the sign of the exponent. So rational exponents, there you go.